the cute blue hedgehog is gone. Now you're up against Supersonic and it ain't gonna be pretty. Supersonic, issue 82. Supersonic, or Fleetway Supersonic as some call him, is perhaps the most popular thing to come from Sonic the comic. Mostly all Sonic fans know of this character, even if they've never read an issue of STC before. Some don't even know he's from this comic, and some even think he's a fan character. Regardless of what people know, or where they think he's from, it's safe to say he's a very famous character within the Sonic fandom, even to this day some almost 20 years since his last canon appearance, a true testament to the talents of writer Nigel Kitchen and artist Richard Elson for creating such an iconic character. But what exactly is Supersonic? Supersonic is a character that appears in the Sonic the Comic series published by Fleetway Editions. He is a powered up form of Sonic the Hedgehog. Supersonic is a psychotic, demon-like entity who manifests himself in Sonic's body under conditions of extreme stress or exposure to chaos energy. Sonic frequently had to battle to keep this alter ego in check because Supersonic's immense destructive powers, hyper-aggression, sadistic humour and lack of restraint frequently endangered innocent civilians and even Sonic's own friends. Indeed, Supersonic seems to enjoy the prospect of killing Sonic's friends. But how did Supersonic come to be? What carnage did he cause? What are his powers? And what was his final fate? To answer these questions and more, we have to go back to the very beginning. Sonic had successfully regained all six of the Chaos Emeralds after his first big defeat of Dr. Robotnik, after the events of the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. Sonic brought the Chaos Emeralds to his secret underground base, however when the Chaos Emeralds are brought together outside of extreme cold or other stabilising conditions, the Chaos Emeralds become unstable and radiate Chaos Energy, generating a spatial warp that sends them into the Special Zone. The collected Chaos Emeralds did just that, and Sonic took the full force of the Chaos Radiation and transformed into Super Sonic. Supersonic was born. Sonic's first transformation into Supersonic didn't last too long. He flew a long way across Mobius before this new incredible power faded away and he turned back into his old blue self. Sonic had no idea of what happened or any memories of when he was Supersonic. This is something that would always be whenever he became Supersonic. Supersonic was not Sonic, it was an entirely different entity. Sometime later, but before the events of STC Issue 1, during the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 the video game, Tails witnessed Sonic transform into Supersonic when he absorbed too much ring energy from the Golden Rings of Mobius. The Golden Rings had been used as a means of channeling evil energy into the Chaos Emeralds by Dr. Ovi Kintobor's Rock Machine. Not much is known about when Sonic became Supersonic in this encounter, as we never see it and Towers only mentions it briefly, but Towers states that they had better keep hidden from Supersonic during this encounter. Issue 7, Supersonic Debuts Sonic and Tails were helping to clean up the oil ocean zone, however an Aquis badnik attempted to burn Sonic alive, having lured him into an oil trap. Facing instant death, the stress caused Sonic to transform into Supersonic. This was the first time that Sonic transformed without absorbing energy from external sources. Sonic later revealed that he had absorbed so much energy over the years that he could now tap into his latent chaos powers whenever he became stressed or extremely angry. Though Sonic was fully aware of Super's existence, he had no memory of what happened while Super was active. 
Due to Super's uncontrollable nature, these transformations were extremely risky. On this first occasion, Supersonic tried to kill the small rabbit he had freed from the Aquis, as well as Taos and their friend Red, until Taos was able to remind Sonic who he was and calm him down enough that he reverted to his usual cool blue persona. Issue 20, Supersonic is back. While investigating a live volcano, Sonic and Tails were attacked by a Rexon badnik. Due to the extreme heat, Tails was unable to carry Sonic to safety. The stress of imminent death approaching caused Sonic to transform. The Rexon badnik was easily destroyed by Super Sonic's incredible power. Supersonic's design has now changed. His spikes now point upwards. He would keep these upward spikes from this point onwards. You'll notice that Supersonic doesn't have any proper eyes like the other Sonic characters. Supersonic has red swirls for iris parts of his eyes. These would change styles slightly as things went on, as you'll see. Supersonic was about to go on the attack and finish off Taos, but thankfully Taos managed to curb Supersonic's destructive instincts through reverse psychology, leading him to prevent the destruction of a village, just to show he could. Poster Mag Issue 5, Stop in a Super Bomb. Sonic and Towers return to the oil ocean zone to stop the plump, an ugly piece of machinery churning out more oil than ever before. It would turn out to be a trap by Robotnik. The real danger is a super bomb hidden on one of the platforms in the oil ocean zone. The explosion would destroy everything in the zone, turning the oil ocean zone into a massive fireball. No one would survive. Sonic was unable to find the bomb. In the final seconds before the detonation, Sonic transformed into Super Sonic. Still unable to find the bomb, Supersonic used his incredible speed and power to contain the blast radius from the bomb within a cocoon of his own speed. This issue was also the first time we see upward spike Supersonic in Richard Elson's style. On these last few occasions, Supersonic was still aggressive, but his power could be directed, but as time goes on, Supersonic would become more and more powerful and much more deranged and psychotic. Issue 50, Supersonic vs Metal Sonic The Sonic and Knuckles game adaptation arc Sonic and Knuckles come face to face with Metallic's Mark II, Metal Sonic. This version of Metallics uses the Master Emerald to increase his power exponentially, making him one of the most powerful and dangerous foes Sonic has yet faced. Metallics defeats Knuckles with just one punch. And would then toy around with Sonic. However, one of Metallics's punches knocked Sonic over onto the Master Emerald. Sonic intentionally dosed himself with the Emerald Power from the Master Emerald. Despite the incredible power of Metallics, he would prove to be no match for Supersonic. Supersonic tore apart Metallics, punching his head clean off. Supersonic then began to savagely beat up Knuckles. Luckily, Supersonic turned back into Sonic just before it got ugly.
So we know now that there are two ways Sonic can transform into supersonic. One is exposure to chaos energy, the second is extreme stress. Issue 65-66, Explosion of Rage. Commander Brutus, this guy made metallics look tame in comparison. Brutus is one of the most powerful foes from STC. Made of Megatal, the strongest metal on Mobius, and also sporting a computer brain adding with Robotnik's brain patterns, and later Grimmer's brain patterns too, making him also one of the most intelligent of foes Sonic has to face. Sonic would be easily defeated by this mighty foe. Later, Sonic, Amy and Johnny was chained by Brutus's troopers but managed to escape. Being chained, the heroes was unable to escape quickly. Brutus saw just how much of a nuisance Sonic could be. Brutus decided to ignore Robotnik's command of capture and decided to execute Sonic right now. Chained and nowhere to go, it looked like the end. In a transformation of rage, Sonic turned into Super Sonic. Now the true fight would begin, Super Sonic vs Brutus. Brutus would be Super Sonic's strongest opponent yet. However, as strong as Brutus is, even he would prove no match for Super Sonic. Realising he's no match for Super Sonic, Brutus tried a different approach. Brutus took Amy hostage, thinking that Sonic wouldn't attack him while he had her captive. This plan didn't work, Super Sonic has no care for Amy's well-being or any of Sonic's friends. In an attack, Super Sonic almost killed Amy while Brutus still held her captive. Super Sonic tore off Brutus' arm, showing he has no problem at all destroying Megatow. Super Sonic is so fast he can dodge multiple bullets at once. Super Sonic goes on a rampage and utterly annihilates Brutus' troopers as if they were nothing. Brutus tried a new strategy to stop Super Sonic in his tracks with a foam cannon. He hits! However, Super Sonic is just far too powerful to contain. Knowing he was no match for Super Sonic, Brutus retreated, making him one of only few opponents to survive a battle with Super Sonic. Super Sonic then shortly turned back into Sonic, ending a truly epic battle. Here's a look at a fantastic original Richard Elson artwork from this story. Check out the superb colours. Sonic Holiday Special Issue 3, Super Sonic and Robotnik finally meet. In the Metropolis Zone's high security prison, Sonic and Towers are planning a breakout of the last of the locked up Emerald Hill folk. Robotnik found out Sonic's plan and prepared battle in his new deadly machine. Robotnik finds them. Sonic and Robotnik would battle. Sonic was caught off guard by Robotnik's attack. Robotnik launched Sonic into a wall. As Tao states, nothing could survive that, however, Sonic had transformed into Super Sonic.
Supersonic and Robotnik meet in person for the first time, though certainly not a good thing for Robotnik. Supersonic punches Robotnik right through the glass of his machine. Supersonic must have only used a small bit of his power here, otherwise Robotnik would for sure be dead. Supersonic makes quick work of Robotnik's machine. With Robotnik not in sight, Supersonic spots the escaping Emerald Hill folk. Supersonic plans to kill them, starting with the pig. You can see the horror on his face. Supersonic destroys the pig. Sonic, as always, has no recollection of it. Luckily, the pig turned out to be a decoy badnik by Robotnik. Issue 80, 81, 82, Running Wild. Perhaps the most popular and fan favourite story to come from STC, the Running Wild arc. Many fans consider this their favourite arc, with many stating this was the turning point in the comic to a more darker yet immensely popular direction. Sonic went to visit Porker Lewis on the floating island. Sonic accidentally fell into the pit in the Emerald Chamber, over which the Chaos Emerald and the Master Emerald were suspended. Supersonic has returned. Supersonic was even more deranged, now sporting jagged fangs, and with no immediate threat to occupy him, decided on a whim to destroy Amy Rose and the other Freedom Fighters. Supersonic was now even more powerful than he was before. An airship full of Robotnik's troopers was unfortunate enough to be in Supersonic's way. With one move, Supersonic destroyed them all. Amy has no idea of just what is approaching. A destructive battle would now take place against Supersonic and the Freedom Fighters. Fire has no effect on Supersonic. Supersonic would now show us a new power of his, eye beams. Supersonic's appearance was now looking closer to that of a demon. Without looking, Supersonic slammed at high speed into solid rocks. This, of course, has no effect whatsoever on Supersonic. Supersonic was now showing an even more sadistic and psychotic side to him, toying with his once friends. He truly wants to kill them. Supersonic spots Amy and the others trying to escape in the tornado. Supersonic shoots it down. Thinking that he's killed his once friends, Supersonic starts to uncontrollably laugh like a maniac. When Sonic returned to normal, he believed he'd killed his friends, so went underground. Cornered by some drunks in a bar, under pressure, Sonic began to transform.
It turns out that Amy and the others used the tornado as a decoy during their last battle with Supersonic. The Freedom Fighters managed to track Sonic's energy using the Kintobor computer after he had transformed again during the bar brawl. Supersonic was surprised to see Amy and Co still alive. This would be a very rare moment where Supersonic would just briefly stop and talk to Amy. Amy was just trying to stall Supersonic. Here we have Supersonic saying a very badass quote. Amy this time however has a plan. Supersonic once again went on the attack with Amy moving out of the way just in time from Supersonic's dive attack. To save Sonic from himself, his friends channeled the emerald radiation out of him through a star post into the special zone. But so great was the energy that Super Sonic was now given an independent existence in the special zone. Sonic and Super Sonic have now split into two separate bodies. Super Sonic continues to exist as a being of pure chaos energy. Issue 8586. So at last we meet. Sonic went straight to the special zone looking for Super Sonic, fearing the worst. However, Sonic ended up getting arrested due to being affiliated with the Chaotix crew, who at that time was wanted by the police. However, Sonic was bowed by the mysterious Lord Sidewinder. Sonic was brought back to Sidewinder's mansion home, but what motive did Sidewinder have for rescuing Sonic? Those sparks can only mean one thing. It's Super Sonic. This was the very first time Sonic and Super met each other. Super Sonic aligned himself with Lord Sidewinder, who is a crime kingpin. Super Sonic used Lord Sidewinder in order to bring the original Sonic to him, with the promise that he would join his team after. The instant Sonic arrived, however, Super Sonic turned on his new associate. Super Sonic then destroyed Sidewinder's mansion with one move, but protecting Sonic and Sidewinder's gang with energy shields so that he could have the pleasure of destroying each one of them personally. Super Sonic brushed aside the attacks of Sidewinder's minions as if they were nothing. Sonic and Super Sonic would now fight. Despite being a psychotic monster, Super Sonic does show his sense of humour during this battle. Sonic was down, he was no match at all for Super Sonic. The only thing Super Sonic feared was that if Sonic lived there was a chance he might become a part of him again, so Sonic must die. But before he could destroy Sonic, they were interrupted by the arrival of Chaotix. A titanic battle ensued. Sonic was coming up with an idea that required the help of his friend, the Omni Viewer, to stop Super Sonic. However, the Omni Viewer had a different idea, one he didn't tell Sonic. Sonic forced Super Sonic into the Omni Viewer.
Sonic had planned for the Omni Viewer to send Super Sonic off to a faraway dimension, but the Omni Viewer knew that Super Sonic would cause destruction, carnage, and death wherever he went. The battle ended. The Omni Viewer absorbed Super Sonic into his energy field and used his space time manipulation powers to freeze time inside it, immobilizing both of them. The Omni Viewer had created the perfect prison. However, a week later, something had changed with Supersonic's position. Issue 88, it's only a matter of time. It transpired that Omni had only managed to slow time to a crawl and that Supersonic would eventually escape. Supersonic is just too powerful for Omni to stop. Before we move on with the story, let's stop and have a look at Super Sonic's powers and skills. Skills, powers and abilities. Flight. Enhanced super strength. Enhanced super speed. Virtual invulnerability. Chaos energy projection. Eye beams. Explosion inducement. Can breathe in space. Super Sonic possesses even greater speed and physical strength than Sonic normally does, example being that he was able to extinguish an erupting volcano with his Sonic Cyclone and defeat opponents that Sonic struggled in vain against with ease. He is so strong that he can even tear and damage solid Megatal, a Mobian metal long believed to be completely indestructible. Super Sonic is also essentially invulnerable, being immune to flames and most other forms of damage. Supersonic has a myriad of other powers derived from emerald radiation. Among his most commonly used powers are the ability to fly at tremendous speeds and the ability to fire highly destructive beams of energy from his eyes, which are always depicted as maniacal red spirals. He can also cast energy shields and supercharge his body to cause massive explosions. Supersonic can also use a green mist to leech energy from an opponent slash victim. Issue 8990, The Black Asteroid Sonic and Chaotix head to a part of the special zone that contains a massive asteroid known as the Black Asteroid. Once the biggest gemstone mine in the special zone, all that's left now are tunnels. The plan is to take Supersonic to the center of the asteroid and leave him there. On departure, we set off a graviton bomb which seals up the main tunnel. After a few setbacks by Knack the Weasel, Sonic and Chaotix arrive in the center of the Black Asteroid. Sonic and Chaotix sealed the Omni Viewer in the Black Asteroid, hoping that even if Super Sonic escaped from the Omni Viewer, he would still be trapped. Super Sonic was now trapped, hopefully forever. Issue 97, 98, 99, Doomsday. Some time has passed and Lord Sidewinder is still trying to find Supersonic, unaware he's trapped in the Black Asteroid, with the hopes of controlling him for his own evil ambitions. Then, two suns appeared in the sky over New Tech City in the Special Zone. The Omni Viewer was back, but that means... The Omni Viewer explains everything to Sonic and Chaotix. I had hoped to trap Super Sonic forever by stopping time for him, but it was too much for me. I did manage to slow time down to a crawl. It would have taken him years to escape. I don't know how, but Super Sonic worked out what was going on. He wanted revenge, and he had no intention of waiting. He must have realized he was trapped inside the Black Asteroid. Sonic, he's turned himself into an electron bomb. He's building up enough power to produce a massive explosion. 
that second sun, it's the black asteroid heated up to millions of degrees. In a matter of hours, it will explode and Supersonic will be free. Supersonic was back. In a matter of hours, he would be free. This also shows that Supersonic has the ability to withstand temperatures of millions of degrees, hotter than the sun. With Supersonic's location now known, Lord Sidewinder makes his way to the Black Asteroid. Thanks to a tip-off from Lightmare of Sidewinder's intentions, Sonic and Chaotix head in pursuit of them. A battle ensures and Sonic with Chaotix defeats Sidewinder and his minions. Vector and Omni arrive on the scene with some very important information regarding Supersonic and the Black Asteroid and dire events happening on the floating island back on Mobius right now. Sonic, listen, we're in big trouble. Dr. Robotnik has captured the Emerald Hill folk on the floating island. He's about to turn them into a biological computer permanently. Sonic has an idea. Omni, do you have enough power to teleport the Black Asteroid to Mobius? Yes, but do it Omni, do it now! Omni sent the Black Asteroid above planet Mobius as per Sonic's instructions. The Black Asteroid is exploding, Supersonic will be free. Issue 100, Supersonic defeated? The effects of the exploding black asteroid were felt across the entire planet. After months of imprisonment, Supersonic was free. This panel here is by far the most famous and well-known image of Supersonic from STC. Here's a look at the original art from Richard Elson. It's incredible. The explosion of the black asteroid created an electromagnetic pulse that wiped out all electrical circuitry. Nearly all computerized systems on Mobius are Robotniks. This is why Sonic sent the Black Asteroid to Mobius. The electromagnetic pulse deactivated all of Dr. Robotnik's badniks computers, contributing to the downfall of the Doctor's dictator rule over the planet. Meanwhile, Supersonic is back, and he's planning to destroy the entire Metropolis City. Supersonic showing more of his twisted humour. Supersonic wasn't going to hold back, he was going to kill everyone. Sonic was defeated, was this the end? But just then, something was wrong with Supersonic. Supersonic was also somehow changed by the explosion, becoming unable to store energy. In this entire part, you can see Supersonic's energy leaving him via the red dispersing energy around his body. Defeated and now powerless, Supersonic fled. With Supersonic no longer a threat, Sonic made his way to the floating island to defeat Robotnik. While Sonic dealt with Robotnik, Supersonic wandered the streets of Metropolis. Supersonic has lost both his powers and his memory. He has no idea of who he once was. Concerned for his well-being and with no idea of who he is, an elderly lady called Madge took him into her care. Issue 102 Nightmares of a Former Self Supersonic continued to stay with the elderly couple Madge and her husband Arthur for a short while. Supersonic was plagued by nightmares of a terrible demon trying to destroy him, in fact his former evil self. Eventually, he decided to try and find out who he was. Madge gave him Arthur's beer money and sent him on his way, hoping for the best. Please don't argue. I have to leave. Don't you see? I've got to find out who I am, and I can't do that staying here. 
thank you. You've been very kind to me. I won't forget it. Meanwhile, at that same time, Amy and Johnny were on the hunt for Supersonic, following very faint traces of his energy signature. The signals were too weak though to trace him. They assumed he would be long gone now from the city. Little did they know, he was closer than they thought. Issue 116, 117, 118. New Friends. Weeks have passed and Supersonic, still in the Metropolis Zone, heads into a coffee shop in hopes for a job. The coffee shop, called The Groovy Train, is run by Ebony, also known as Mystic Mog. All the money he received from Madge has been spent. Also in the coffee shop is Ebony's friend Pyjamas, a psychic. Ebony sees good in the mysterious stranger and is willing to trust him. Pajamas, on the other hand, is very sceptical and senses a great evil within this stranger, but since he appeared so weak, Ebony dismissed the claims. Meanwhile, in the Special Zone, Sidewinder and his gang have escaped prison and are on the hunt once again for Supersonic. Using a dimensional teleporter, Sidewinder has sent Biohazard, his minion, to Mobius to find the weakened Supersonic and bring him back to Sidewinder in the Special Zone. Biohazard tracks down Supersonic in the coffee shop. Pyjamas knows something is not right. Ebony, a magic user, tries to take on Biohazard while Supersonic and Pyjamas flee. Biohazard is one strong dude, but not the brightest. Hey, where did all these guys come from? Hey, is this some kind of trick? Just like I thought, thick as two short planks. Trying to make a fool of me? You think I'm dumb? Don't you laugh at me. Try laughing this off. They managed to escape him. Ebony decides to find out just who the mysterious yellow stranger is and why Biohazard is after him. She asks Pyjamas to do her psychic mind lint connection to go into Super's mind to find out who he really is. Biohazard is already onto them. Pyjamas gets a horrific vision of just who she has in front of her. The mind connection worked, Supersonic's memory has returned, not just that though, all of Super's powers have also returned. Biohazard finds them. Supersonic now remembers him. Wait a minute, you're Supersonic? You're that evil demon with enough power to destroy a planet? I'm afraid so. Something was different though. Despite his memory and powers returned to him, Supersonic wasn't evil anymore. He retained his kind, friendly and good-natured personality. Supersonic says he's never going to use his powers again in fear that if he does, he'll turn back into his evil demon self. Biohazard was about to catch him, however... Sidewinder and his gang had been captured by the police. Resulting in Biohazard being pulled back into the special zone. Despite knowing his true identity, Ebony and Pyjamas stayed with Supersonic, seeing the good in his new self. Supersonic considered turning himself in, however was talked out of it. 
In the end, Supersonic got the job in Ebony's coffee shop and the three became very good friends. Issue 146, 147, 148 The Demon Returns Quite some time has passed and Supersonic has been living a peaceful life with Ebony and Pyjamas in Metropolis City. It seems that this would be a happy and peaceful end for Supersonic. However, a derailed train is about to fall off a bridge in Supersonic's location. If it falls, many Mobians would perish. Only Supersonic can save them, but Super fears that if he uses his powers to save them, he'll return to his demon self. Supersonic saved them, and he appears to have not changed back to his evil self. The sparks around Supersonic return. What's the problem? I'm not worried about what other people think anymore. Fine, but I still say... Look, I'm sick of being on the run. I'm sick of my life being made of misery. From now on, I'm going to do exactly what I want. It, however, was a delayed reaction. Once Supersonic tapped into his powers, his evil true self returned. Meanwhile, Sonic was alerted of identical energy once monitored from Supersonic in Metropolis City. Sonic immediately made his way there. Supersonic was back. I'm going to destroy this city. When I'm finished, there won't be one building left standing. Supersonic, listen to me. You mustn't do this. This evil personality isn't the real you. You just want to live a peaceful life, remember? It seems that Ebony was able to get through to Supersonic, trying to get him to snap back into his kind self again. However, it was just a cruel joke by Supersonic, showing more of his sadistic humour. Supersonic attacked his former friends. In just a few seconds, Super then burrowed to the centre of the planet and caused a massive volcanic eruption. He then flew out to space and contemplated destroying the ozone layer to let everyone die by global warming, however decided that was far too slow to kill everyone. Super come up with a much more deadly plan. With his immense strength, Super grabbed the moon and threw it into Mobius. Luckily, Ebony had managed to hit Supersonic with her magic spell, the Globe of Enrock, before Super caused all this destruction. What had just happened was just a fantasy inside Super's head, thinking he's actually caused all this destruction. The strain of this spell was taking its toll on Ebony. Soon, Supersonic would be free again. Pyjamas had an idea. While Ebony had Super under her spell, Pajamas would use her psychic mind link to try and erase this recent memory of Supersonic. It worked! Supersonic was back to his good-natured self once again, with no memory of what just happened. Just then, Sonic arrived, though Ebony had just managed to hide Super before he spotted them. Convinced that Super wasn't there, as no evidence of destruction was present, Sonic left them.
This would be a very close call for Supersonic, and from this point on he swore to never use his powers again. The three went back to living a normal, peaceful life together and continued to do so for a long time. Supersonic would not use his powers again. Issue 183184 The End of Supersonic Years have passed since Supersonic last turned evil. Supersonic is dying. Ebony, with a weakened and frail Supersonic, arrive at Robotnik's old fortress. A massive battle was taking place. Chaos had just absorbed all of the Chaos Emeralds, transforming into perfect chaos. Sonic and the others were fighting a desperate battle to stop Perfect Chaos. Super Sonic arrived at the battle. Sonic was furious to see Super Sonic and wanted to know why Ebony was hanging around with him. Ebony tries to explain that Super was different now and no longer evil. Supersonic is a creature composed of chaos energy, and now his energy is almost used up. Because of that, Supersonic is slowly dying. Ebony had brought Supersonic to this location as she detected the presence of chaos energy, hoping to recharge him, though she had no idea they would find a monster like Perfect Chaos waiting for them. Supersonic hurled himself into perfect chaos. Supersonic is now inside perfect chaos. Sonic fears that if Super steals perfect chaos's energy, he will become evil once again. Ebony is sure her friend won't turn back into his old wicked ways. It's done! Supersonic absorbed all of Perfect Chaos's energy, therefore defeating him. Supersonic is once again healthy. It seems that Supersonic is still his good old self. It was short-lived. Unfortunately, the re-energized Supersonic had reverted to his demonic full-power state. Supersonic set his sights on Sonic & Co. The final battle against Supersonic is about to begin. Tails gets a shot in behind Supersonic and even stuns him. Tails would pay the price for this. In order to save the planet from Supersonic, Sonic and Ebony worked together to try and trick Supersonic. It wouldn't be easy, but this was a desperate time. Whilst fighting against Knuckles, Super used his green mist attack to leech energy, draining the Echidna of his power. Supersonic expressed that his only concern was killing Sonic too quickly. Sonic and Super Sonic locked it up. Sonic could not hold him for long. His plan would have to work. Ebony got in place. It looked like Ebony's spell had backfired. Looks like your magic's backfired, Ebony. You made the wrong hedgehog vanish. But it was just the opposite. Ebony had reintegrated Sonic and Super Sonic into a single being again, just as they used to be in the beginning. Super Sonic was gone, this time for good. And though an evil demonic monster had been sealed away forever, the kind, gentle soul of Super Sonic's other side was also sacrificed. Would Sonic transform into Super Sonic again in times of great stress? It's not known as this is the final issue of Sonic the Comic. This was the end of Sonic the Comic and Super Sonic's journey. Would this really have been the end of Super Sonic? 
Writer Nigel Kitchen has stated plans of how Supersonic could have returned if STC had continued. But that's a story for another day. It's safe to say that Supersonic will continue to remain relevant and popular as ever as we head into the future. We have reached the end. Thank you for watching this audio version of Supersonic's journey. I hope you enjoyed. Farewell, Supersonic.